what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Let's talk a little LSU football here. As uh, there's, a, there's a solid piece, what was this on? Where uh, Tiger Wire? Yeah, the USA Today uh, LSU fan site. Basically uh, ranking the SEC offensive lines, and here they are. Uh, coming in at fifth, the Missouri Tigers. Of course, incredible year last year. Outside zone um, used to great effect. Should be good again this season. Coming in at number four, Alabama. An offensive line that seemed to have all the talent in the world last year. Uh, really struggled early on, but found their way late. And I think is going to be the main driving force behind this Kalen DeBoer Alabama team. Uh, number three, Texas. Uh, I can't, uh, why am I blanking on his name? Um, their tackle is maybe one of the only guys. Kelvin Jake, Banks. Uh, thank you. Kelvin yeah. Banks is one of the only guys that can maybe challenge Will Campbell for that first offensive lineman taking off the board uh, coming up this spring. Number two, you have UGA. Uh, the, 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 they, they have a guard combo that is equivalent to your tackle combo yeah uh two guys that are first rounders that um are are, are you know the top 10 in the in, in their position in the entire country and then no surprise here number one in the sec and it's not even that particularly close your lsu tigers and it's not because like look this is an opinionated offseason list um but it's not just that they rank number one it's that when you look at all the lines, it really starts to show you how exceedingly rare what LSU will be bringing to bear up front this year is in that it's almost, well, it's it's unlike anything I've ever seen. I've never seen, Jake, the combination of experience and talent line up on a single unit that has five guys that are normally always like at like varied, you know, different years and yeah. Maybe you have like three guys that are juniors and seniors, like a freshman mixed in, one sophomore in the bunch. I mean, outside of DJ Chester, all you got are not just vets, but kind of like super vets. Yeah. I mean, and, and Will Campbell and Emory Jones, you have two guys that have combined for 50 snaps. And Garrett Delger and Miles Frazier, you have two guys that are entering their fourth season as starters. How about this? This is a great uh, uh, a number within the article. Who wrote it? Uh, Taylor, give me the name so I can credit him. Um, the guards and tackles have played a combined 7,209 snaps together. Um, again, unparalleled. So, I mean, yeah. a lot of pressure on DJ Chester being the new guy to make it work. But it's so it's all that experience mixed with the fact that Emory Jones is a for, for surefire first round pick and Will Campbell's number one overall on the athletics big board. It's, it's a wild, uh, dominant unprecedented in my experience amount of talent experience yeah you're right so you mentioned kelvin banks at texas he's going to be top 10 pick but that's one guy uh you mentioned georgia and their guards uh, like tate rattledge is a really really good football player probably going to be a back end of the first round maybe type of guy like that's a, that's a maybe but those are one guy yeah you know and georgia's got a couple of guards you're right and texas has some good linemen but they don't have what lsu has they don't have two bookend left and right tackles that are going to be first rounders. Will Campbell's challenging to be maybe the number one overall pick. Yeah, he'll if he stays on the same path, he'll be a top five pick without question. Emory Jones has played his way into the teens right now. I, I think Garrett Dellinger is going to be a pro. I don't now. I don't know what that round looks like, but he's going to be a pro. And yep. DJ Chester, somebody that young, be able to play that position. Who knows where his career could go as well. So it's not just one guy like it is at some other places. It's not just two guys. I mean, it is, like you pointed out, the totality of this offensive front. And you've actually, you know, you've got some some quality backups that you feel pretty good about as well. Like even losing a guy like you lost last year to Tennessee and Heard, like you yeah. still feel really good because you have a five-star coming in that is a tackle that's going to, you know, be able to learn under two of the best in the country and then step right in as well. And if he had to play, like you wouldn't feel awful about it because you have some real depth on this offensive front. And look, when I was catching up with Scott Woodward down in Destin, I just, you know, having some conversation about what the team's going to look like next year, man. When he talks about the offensive line, he just lights up. I mean, from coach to, to players, to philosophy, to everything, that's probably the most excited I, I saw Scott talking about this football team. 
Well, it's uh, look in a, in, a, in a roster full of question marks. Uh, not only is it the the it 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 has none. Like like it is the most surefire yeah. successful group on the team, and, and and it would be it would be almost in any year. Not not but but it but it but it's especially impactful in a year where you're going to be working in a new quarterback. Uh, you're, you're, you're going to be working in a, a, a new set of co-offensive coordinators, a new play caller, right? Like uh, new receivers who are going to have to try to step up and be dominant. Uh, like the thing that makes all of this, that, that that's the great part about the offensive line. It doesn't have the uh, lightning bolt, very visible impact that let's say Jake, a, you know, a Malik neighbors who can make a leaping catch in the back of the end zone has, right? But what the offensive line does have is a, a, a its impact is diffused over the entirety of the team. Like, that's why there's all these, old, you know, it all starts up front. You could also extend that thing. It all starts up front, and then it extends to all the other all the other position groups. So, like, yeah, uh, you give the quarterback more time. You give the receivers more time to get over. The quarterback's more comfortable throwing out of a uh, set base. It's easier for us to find them. Um, I mean, obviously with running back, it's it, it's not hard to understand at all, especially with a revised rushing attack, which else she's going to try to look to employ this year. Um, like if, if this team is going to push back or push past that nine and three kind of glass ceiling that I've put on them, um, it will be because this offensive line is setting the table for everyone else to have great success. Yeah, and I mean, what Brad Davis also just brings to yep. this offensive front, they got one of the best offensive line coaches in the country as well. So like that again, like it's the totality. It's everything that T Bob's laying out. It's the coach that they have. Uh, Brad Davis is somebody that any any school in the country would want to have him as their offensive line coach, right? And he has shown that he can do more with less. But now look at what he has to play with. I yeah. mean, he has the who's who of the offensive front. So think about the line play that they've gotten. I mean, you're starting a true freshman in the SEC and Will Campbell now one of the best players in the country. But like he got him ready to be in that position. Emory Jones wasn't expected to even play tackle. No. He was supposed to be a guard, but you, out of necessity, had to make him a tackle, and now you've made him a first-round tackle. Yeah. Like, that's a that's a tip of the cap to Brad Davis and what he's been able to do. You start with Dellinger at center, and then you have to move Charles Turner to center second game, and you make it work. Now, the players get credit, too, but you have to have an offensive line coach that can go out there, can do that, and not miss a beat. Start talking about offensive line is... You have the ability to run multiple schemes. Now, you haven't had to do that because you had the ultimate game changer and Jaden Daniels, a quarterback. And yep. so, like, you had the ability to use his running ability. And I don't want to say be simple in the run game, but it was. It was a kiss method. It was keep it simple, stupid. You don't have to do that anymore because you have offensive line. Like, if you want to run outside zone, you can run it either direction. Like, yep. Missouri ran it to the left behind Javon Foster last year, and Cody Schrader is one of the best outside zone runners we had. And so, like, teams knew that and still couldn't stop it. Okay, but you can run outside zone both ways. You can run inside zone still. You can do any gap scheme gap because scheme. you've got two guards that scheme. are pullers. If you want to run Powers some kind of counters. a horn boss yeah. situation, you can do that. I mean, you have a center that's super athletic. If you want him to be a puller, you can do anything that you want to in the run game. And I'm right. I'll Give me a counter. Like give me you got all these tight ends, make them the second puller. You yeah. can you can make it in eleven personnel. Mm -hmm. Tennessee does it all the time. Their tight end becomes the second puller and they gash people because you're in eleven, everybody's spread out, and you can still be aggressive. It's what else you did with Mashburn back in the day, right? When they yeah. set the record against Florida. That's exactly right. Um, they knew it was coming. And number one for Florida, Cox quit. He tapped out. He said, No mas. I don't want any more of this. He was on the field, but he quit. Because you just kept time and time again spreading them out one on one matchup and ja uh, Mashburn just well he mashed him yeah <laughs> Jack <laughs> Mashburn wherever you are shout out dude legendary day I love those little tiny little moments and fleeting bits of game and story that'll be lost to time but at the time were so fun to celebrate and and made you so happy um so yeah look I guess the point of this segment is to just really highlight what an incredible strength the LSU offensive line is but not just the strength like again I really want to highlight the unprecedented nature of it because Jake we saw we've seen some incredible lines right a line featuring like Rodney Reed Steven Peterman would Witt have been yeah. on that line as well yep. like is that what maybe comes closest to this yeah I think so I mean that was he had Ben Wilkerson 
Yeah, we'll in the middle of that. Well. Yeah, that's I mean pretty, that one's, that's a strong four right there that as one's, well. That one's tough. That one's that one's tough to beat, but. Like, I mean, this probably has four to five NFL guys on it as well. That's what well. I'm thinking. And, like, and you got to top could... in. Like, Andrew Whitworth's one of the best tackles to play in football in yeah. the last 25 years. Yeah. But, like, coming out of college, Will Campbell's going to have more hype than any LSU offensive lineman maybe ever. Like, yeah. I mean, and we're talking Kevin Mawai and Alan Fanica. I really, th- those guys are Hall of Fame football players. But I'm talking about just out of college, day one, the hype surrounding Will Campbell in the NFL is going to be higher than it's ever been before. And, you know, even if you want to say that the Peterman line and all that was better, uh, that's 20 years ago now, 22 years ago. So there's been entire lifetimes yeah. lived and died and, you know, a babies born that can now drink and do whatever they want. Like, it's it, it's been a long time since you've had this amount of talent up front. Wow, Jake. What incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.